They're just like that with green flag here in New Hampshire. A half car like back. Bell kind of cheats the bottom. The wow. double zero will chase down into the corner. That is really impressive by Cole to push the issue there this early in the race. I think these two guys know. Look at them trading paint off a of turn four. I think they know that they can't let one another take the lead and control this race. We saw it last week in Kentucky. These two swapped the lead, and whoever had the lead controlled the race. They can control the pace. They can use the entire track. The double zero does not want to give it up, and it's going to be hard to contend from that lower lane. And like that, the 20 clears him. But look at that left rear tire of the 20, guys. No more yellow riding, no more Goodyear. We're going to have to see if that holds up. The battle is on. The battle has continued. That is the number 12, the yellow Menard's car. That is Paul Menard in fourth. Harrison Burton in that 18 Dex car in fifth. And Brandon Jones in that 19 in sixth. And Junior, this has been a yeah. great battle. Brandon Jones was in front of his teammate, Harrison Burton, but tried to go the inside of Menard, just as Harrison Burton has tried many times. Harrison jumped to the outside of his teammate, Brandon Jones, and took that spot back away. You see Mom very happy with what's going on out on the racetrack. You call it happy, looks nervous to me. Well, she was clapping. <laughs> um, Harrison, you know, we're watching Harrison literally learn very critical lessons. And here he goes again, another opportunity, and she's saying, please let this be a time he gets by there. Harrison, he needs to do is use some track right here, right? There you yeah, go. And take, it's up the take, track a little bit. Slide up and take the position. As your spotter would say, take what you need. Yeah. That well, would be the, that's advice that my spotter would always give me. And he, he overdrove the corner, and somebody may get on the underneath him, but that's okay, right? You, you, yes. You're looking for that outside lane. That's what you, you – it's okay to overdrive that corner to get yourself where oh, they're trying to drive. Oh, the yeah, that's bit. not okay. Uh -huh. That's too much outside. He's going to recover, though. Smart. Good move. Up. Heavy damage to the 23 of John Hunter Nemechek. You see the entire back of the car torn off. Right, right here you see he loses control on corner entry. Hard impact for New Hampshire. Absolutely. Said he didn't have any brakes going down in the corner. And that's what's going to happen. This car, you're going to need brakes to slow down here. Let's get down to the pits. Dave. Cole Custer thought he might be able to fix part of his handling issues by backing up his corner a little bit. As for Justin Allgaier, he felt like he needed a little tape off the front of the grill to help with the freeness of the race car, Marty. Nice move by the crew chiefs here. Jason Ratcliffe calling for Christopher Bell, the leader, who's led all 33 laps at this point to come to pit road. No changes on the car, but pitting here, they can make it to the end of stage two. Justin Allgaier gave the bumper to Justin Haley there in the middle of three and four to be able to take that position away and bring his teammate Ryan Trix along through. Behind those guys, you see that battle. Cole Custer trying to get by Paul Menard. And then attack Haley if he can. Worried about getting side draft there. So he moves away. Keep the 12 of Menard from getting too much position on him for the entry. Because if you go into that corner side by side, door to door, you get so loose on the bottom on, without that side force in the car. Two to go. Now it's one to go. Final lap of this stage, and Tyler Reddick in the two. He isn't thinking second. He is thinking playoff point with winning this stage, running the bottom of the racetrack, trying to get inside the 19 of Jones. Unable to do it. Surprisingly, runs right around the bottom of the racetrack. Brandon Jones needs one more good set of corners to win this stage. Oh, boy, Reddick dives it in there. Where's where he going to go with this run? <laughs> He's going to oh. get aggressive. Brandon Jones with momentum on the corner exit. Look at here, somebody's gonna steal it. Man, three wide at the line. Jones gets it. Christopher Bell was second. Reddick third. <laughs> Jones, first stage win of the year for Brandon Jones. Three wide. Let's get stage two underway. Tyler Reddick in the two, the 20 of Christopher Bell. Bell's the leader, he chose the top. Gets a good acceleration. Let's see if they can get it sorted out down here in one and two. One thing we know, Reddick's gonna drive it deep in the corner right here. Let's see if he can rotate the middle. Bell's really fast on that outside line. An intentional move by Justin Algar to get to the outside line and try to get on the quarter panel of the two car. Came from the inside line of row two to do that move. That tells you how important that outside line is on these restarts. Cole Custer back there in fourth. He's trying to pick a lane. Who am I going to follow? The seven to two. Ooh, boy, that was close. And look at those guys back there. Paul Menard getting into the quarter panel of Ryan Truex. Two by two. Oh, Paul almost jumps the cushion a little bit there. Almost gets over the edge of the grip. That third lane. Great battle back here. It is. We see the 12 of Paul Menard, 22, the one of Annette, the 18 of Harrison Burton working back in the picture, trying to recover from that slow pit stop. But the battle up front continues between Allgaier and Reddick for the second position. 
see right here inside Tyler Reddick's car, 120 degrees. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not going to say that's great, but it's uh, that's hot, Steve. Some, I thought it was lower than I expected. <laughs> Still very uncomfortable. Very that's, uncomfortable. That's that's uh that's how uncomfortable it is. Steve said 120 is not bad, right? <laughs> yeah, we see all guys the same way. Another 120 degrees. Guys, listen. It's tough for these guys, but tomorrow a longer race, side windows are in. I expect another 10 or 15 degrees. Think about Paul Menard is running both races. As we're on board, I love this this helmet cam is just so cool. It, it's allowed. I wish when I was a crew chief that my driver had, I would I'd have made him wear this every single race. Because if I think I could have watched from this view right here, I might have been able to connect what we're trying to do, what the driver's saying. As we see right here, a battle for seven. That 22, let's not forget, started shotgun on the field. Austin Cedric in that 22 doing a nice job. Paul Bernard, though, trying to pass him right here. He sent that thing down in the corner. And oh! Couldn't make it. Roll to the middle. Right behind him is Harrison Burton rebounding from that pit road issue. He's been running some great laps, top five laps. Well, we see two to go in the stage. Bell continues to lead over six seconds over all guy. Custer, Reddick, Menard. You mentioned Menard's car getting better as we see the white flag in this lap or in this stage for the 20. That last stage is 110 laps. That might help Menard. That's just what he needs. Longer runs. Plus, I think the experience behind the wheel, you talk about changes and adjustments. That experience, just more starts than the rest of these guys can communicate to his crew chief what he needs. I'm not sure what Christopher Bell needs, other than maybe a cold drink of water and an ice pack. He's going to win his 11th stage of 2019, winning the second stage here at New Hampshire. Not a great restart for Justin Algar. Cedric looking three wide here. Don't know if he has position to do it. Maybe protecting that position from Cole Custer. Now here comes a seven, trying to make a run. Oh, oh man, a big Cedric fly by Cedric. hard into the two car. Wonder if there was contact. Looks like the letter's still on the, the tires of that two car on the left side. Here's some burden to the bottom, trying to take advantage of these guys. Paul Menard going backwards. He's stuck in the middle. Gregson looks inside the 18. As we see the 8 of Truex slides up into the 22. Yep, into. Those two guys, I think, are going to be in the fence together. Yeah, keep an eye on <laughs> now, this. Keep an eye on yeah. this because these guys have been together all day. See, oh, drives it in, see. makes it three wide. See, going to slide up and shut the door on the 8. I think he's going to. And three wide behind them. They just restarts are crazy. And inside the car, the intensity level is so high. Oh, oh the man. 22 gives a shot to the nine. Cost himself there where the eight car of Truex was able to go by, but he's back on the inside, down the back straightaway. Let's see what the nine does, though. He has the 22 lined up. Is he going to return the favor? He's not. I don't know if he could if he wanted. The 22 drove so far into the corner. He drove far enough in there and cleared the eight. Could have slid up in the middle of the corner, but he's going to cost himself on corner exit here in the fence. Man. I mean, this battle right here for fifth, that's the 12 Ooh, of Paul boy. Menard on the outside, the 18 of Harrison Burton on the inside. Harrison using it up a little bit. We didn't see that at the start of the race. It's a lot more conservative, but now it's time to go. Paul's trying to fight him off. He knows his car gets better. He's trying to hold that position. Take another look at that eight and the 22 right here. Up the track, a little bit of rub on that 22 left rear tire with the right front corner of the eight car. All right, Harrison, if you're going to shut the door, you're going to slide up here, take it yeah. away. That's how you do it. Yeah, Paul Menard, he, over he, here. he knew it was coming. He's going to try to cross him over. That's crazy. I didn't know he could shift. <laughs> You didn't know your boy could shift. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. oh, he gets spun by the 12. Oh. Unreal. Heavy damage to the left front corner right on the 18. All right, keep it rolling. All right, turn down. Spun back around, I have to get it to pit road. Got to get that repaired. We were on board. We saw the contact. We're going to have to see a replay up high to see what led to the contact. See the frustration behind the wheel. So 
Missouri. Ledger to Harrison drove into turn three. There's a lot of racetrack, side by side contact here. Here's the, the incident here. The 12 just getting in the corner deep up the racetrack into the back of the 18, turns the 18 around, sends that car into the wall hard. May run out of time though with only two laps as we see the 20 of Christopher Bell. In turns three and four, worked his way through lap traffic. It's clear sailing in front of him currently. He'll take the white flag. He likes to see that. One lap to go, presented by Credit One Bank. The 24-year-old from Norman, Oklahoma. This would be his 13th win in 59 starts, proving why his name continues to come up in conversation, why he's deserving of a cup ride. Everything he gets in seems to win from dirt, from sprint cars to asphalt to Xfinity cars. As we have a car wrecking off turn four, but I don't think that will change the outcome. A little slide by Christopher Bell, and Christopher Bell will win at New Hampshire. Great job, everybody on this team. That was fun. Yeah. That's right. That's cute. It's the fourth time this year, the 20 of the double zero finished on one and two, including the last two weeks. Infinity Series circuit. You know you've won a lot when you reach down, start adjusting that brake lever. Let's yeah. see a burnout, Christopher Bell. Last week we talked about it. I saw him in Kentucky. He felt so good about his car and second place, but so dejected in his interview. Crew chief Jason Ratcliffe, they said, we have to stay on top of the racetrack. That's just what they did. Fifth win this year and just reminds us why his name is in conversation as a championship favorite. Another guy, we, you know, we were, we love this My Track, My Roots campaign. Well, you know, that's this guy, right? I mean, oh, he yeah. raced dirt tracks all over the country, going to run about 30 dirt races this year, in addition to his Xfinity races. He ran this week up here in the Northeast. Late model race. He's getting pretty good at this. <laughs> Hundred and eighty-six laps led out of two hundred. He parks that car in perfect. Motorsports fans, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe before you go for all the latest news and highlights across motorsports.